In this video we're going to take a quick look at the Model View Controller design pattern and we're going to consider how it fits with Spring Boot. First of all, what is Model View Controller? I say it's probably one of the best known design patterns and, and here's why. First of all, it, it is. I mean, MVC, you can say that and people will automatically know what you mean. Most, most software developers will know. But secondly, an interview question I ask a lot is, what's your favorite design pattern? And probably 80% of the time, the answer I get in response is model view controller. And, and it's almost kind of a default. It's almost like I'm more interested if you say something that's not model view controller. So for the model, it, we generally are thinking about data. Think of a DTO, a data transfer object. In other words, a Java class that has attributes with getters and setters, that would essentially be a model. The model could be populated from a database or other persistence mechanism, or it could be populated by a user on a web form or a mobile app or anything else like that. So the model is essentially the data that the user enters or that the user sees. Now the view is the layout that the user sees. Don't confuse layout with data. Think of online banking. It's going to look the same every time you log in, except the numbers will be different. So the look and feel with your bank's logo and the navigation, so on and so forth, that's the view. But the numbers, your account balance, interest earned, credits and debits, that would be the model. So these two things fit together well. Now the controller is typically some kind of programming unit like a Java class that handles things like events and button clicks and routing from one screen to another. So model, we think a DTO, a Java class. Controller, we also think a Java class. We'll typically think of uh, something that has these event handlers. But then the view, while it could be a Java class, especially if it's something like Swing, uh, many times it is XML or HTML based. And we see this paradigm played out several times over. Uh, several examples here. One is an Android. What we'll typically have is a controller, which is a Java class, and a view, what the user sees, is an XML file. So I just wrote a quick and dirty Android application here. And if you take a look here, this kind of looks like a screen that you would see on an Android application. But take a look when I go to text, you see that it actually is just an XML document. And Android knows how to render it to make it look like this. So that would be the view. But now let's go take a look at the controller. If I go to, uh, let's say, notifications activity, this is a controller class. And I don't expect that you know Android when you're looking at this, but you see there's an on-click annotation, and you see there's an on-click for RDO big picture style. Well, guess what? That's if you were to click this radio button right here, this thing called notifications activity, which is a Java class, is going to handle that click. So this activity is the controller, but then this XML file is the view. Now this is just a quick and dirty app I threw together, so I do not yet have uh, a, a model, but a model is, is essentially just a DTO, uh, a, a very simple Java class. So we'll go ahead and get out of that. So that's, that is one example, but there are many others. Things like Microsoft Silverlight works in a similar way. Also think about C Sharp. You have a concept of an ASPX file, which is a view, and a code behind, which is the controller. Struts. Struts is a Java fr a framework that we frequently use in Java. Uh, so Struts XML is a controller. It's, it's, this is kind of an interesting one because uh, the controller logic is placed into an XML file in this case. And there's kind of like a backing piece of logic, a, a Struts servlet that handles that, knows how to interpret that. And then the HTML page is the view. And then finally, we have Spring MVC, which guess what MVC stands for there, Model View Controller, and that works well with Spring Boot. So in Spring, the model is a DTO, no surprise there. Uh, the DTO will likely have some annotations for auto wiring and injecting and named things like this, so we can use it with Spring Boot. The view is usually just a plain old HTML page. Could be something else. Could be a JSON stream. Could be an XML stream. It doesn't necessarily have to be something that's viewed by a user. It could be viewed by another computer system that is going to our application for some downstream data. So it could be HTML. Could be something else. We will use something called Timeleaf, which is a, a kind of like a library that helps us out to merge together the view with any model that we pass into that view. 
Finally, we have the controller. And in Spring, this is a class. So for the controller, we have several annotations. An annotation is just a way that we describe an application or a class in Java. So the class itself will start with an at controller annotation above the public class line. So there's only one of those, and it's describing the class itself. Now this class might have a series of methods. These methods are going to be described with request mapping. Request mapping is essentially uh, taking a URL or some kind of endpoint and saying, if this URL or if this endpoint is requested, what do we do with that request? How do we handle it? Request param goes along well with request mapping. Request param is saying, how do we take the name value pairs out of the URL and how do we get access to those? In other words, if we take a look at plainplaces.com, there's kind of a quick search up here where I can look for Eastern Redbud, for instance, and it will do some autocomplete logic. That's kind of a, a, a newer search and one that I like. I'll show you the first search screen that I ever put on this website. If we go over here to advanced search, look at this. Way complicated. Uh, part of the reason I went to a simpler search, like a, a unified search up here, I asked my wife to search for Eastern Redbud. She opened up the search screen and said, where do I put Eastern Redbud? And she had a very valid point. This is a screen that makes sense to me as a programmer. Probably doesn't make sense to an average user. But nonetheless, take a look. If I put genus equals Circus, species is canadensis. Notice that autocompletes. Uh, common name is Eastern. You probably don't want to fill out too much stuff here. But nonetheless, when I hit search, watch the URL across the top. You see genus equals Circus. Species equals canadensis, cultivar is blank, common is eastern, category is all, and so on and so forth. So by submitting this form, I have pushed a series of name value pairs up in the URL, and those name value pairs determine what search results I see here. So for instance, I could take away the uh, genus of Circus and the species of canadensis. I can just kind of uh, take it away right here in the URL if I want but leave the common name of Eastern. If I hit enter there, you notice I get not only the Eastern Redbud, which is Circus canadensis, but I get any other plant in this database that has the name Eastern in it. So Eastern White Pine, Eastern Hemlock, so on and so forth. So the request param is a way where we can say, give me access to these name value pairs in the URL and make them available to my Spring Boot application. So that wraps up our discussion of Model View Controller with Spring Boot. In our next video, we'll do a hands-on example. I look forward to seeing you then. Thank you.